the goals here is for me to teach you um, the ABC of radio communication which is accuracy, brevity and clarity I'm going to teach you how to send signals in accordance with the ABC I'm also going to teach you how to utilize pro words correctly and you're going to be able to send and receive correct reports so welcome to the RTO course my name is JB, 24 years old. I spent three and a half years in the Danish Army as a mechanized infantry section 2IC, armored infantry section leader, and now I'm a gunner on the CV90. So I had a bit to do with radios and signals throughout my time in the Army. The way we're going to do this course is where it's divided into uh, six parts. We have first, we'll introduce you to the ABC of radio communication, the components of a signal types of net and organization, pro words and their use, reports and at the end we're going to have a small practical exercise where you'll be driving around a bit on general rules and sending reports to me. Good enough. So radio signals are now an essential part of winning in a modern warfare scenario. For that part it's been an essential part ever since, well, World War II, at least, they uh, had the real dawn of them. We all know the stories about how German panzers were, for example, able to overcome better and more powerful French tanks in because they could easily communicate, also when they overcame the Russian panzers. This is one example of what superior communication using radios can bring you. The course is designed to teach you the fundamentals of communicating swiftly and effectively on the radios that we have within Acre, and we do this by utilizing some real-life procedures from radio protocols. So, first part, ABC of radio communication. By disseminating information in a standardized order, by using reports, we can speed up the passing information, but we can also, by choosing our words more carefully, further increase the process and the speed of it. And this ensures, I'm sorry, to ensure fast and effective information sharing via radio net, we then use the acronym ABC. So I mentioned the first one is accuracy. Accuracy means that passing accurate information in your message is important. Like say, if for example, a contact report using the Salter report, which you can learn later on, is passed along with an incorrect location of the enemy, then the information is not accurate and therefore entire thing is useless. Now, of course, if we're talking about you getting it wrong by like 100 meters or 200 meters, we can live for that. But when we start getting out to, like, for example, 300 meters, 500 meters or more, what sort of effect could that have on us if we're sending a contact report on an enemy and we get the distance very, very wrong? Can't zero our gun. Weapons range. Yeah. For example, if the contact port I'm given says that the enemy T-72 is 200 meters, uh, is is sorry, is at this point here. Well, if he's 200 meters away, that's that's okay for me. Because for example, me as a fighting leader, I have an AT-4. It has effective range of around 300 meters, so I can still I can still deal with this threat if I need to. However, if this T-72 is further out than that, and the report was wrong, the information was accurate, and it's out to 500, 600 meters, I'm fucked. I'm most likely going to die if I then get to a location where I'm going to be able to shoot at it, and, per se, it will almost certainly be able to also shoot at me. So that's one example of why accuracy and information that you pass along is important. And the information must also always be true to what you have seen, heard, or experienced, and it must be with no alteration if it is information that is given to you by a third party with the intent of you relaying it. Now what I mean about this is do not dream up things. Do not dream up enemies or anything. Report only what you've seen, what you have heard. If you've heard one engine or two engines, that's all you've heard. Don't start going into like 
This might be an IV engine, this might be a tank engine or something. Do not start dreaming up sizes of enemies unless you are absolutely certain. Unless you've seen that this is an enemy squad. Don't say squad, it then might be a fire team if you're not certain. The hell, it might be even be a platoon if you're not absolutely certain. Only report what you've seen, heard, directly experienced, and do not alter what is given to you when you are supposed to relay it further. Any questions to accuracy? Cool. Then we move on to brevity. Now, a radio net usually contains several cosines, making the time spent sending a signal on that net a very, very valuable commodity. Now, especially when a unit enters combat, brevity becomes imperative to avoid clogging the net with uh, redundant words and phrases, you know, like, uh, you're just breathing in there for two seconds, clocking up the net even further. So, before pressing your push to talk uh, button, which by default on radio is cap lock, think about how you're going to formulate your message. It needs to be short, to the point, and without unnecessary words. Now, one way is to say the report inside your head before sending it, and then use whatever corrections you need, as you say, as you found out when you've already run through one time inside your head, saying them when you actually send it. So what you're doing is think, push, and then speak. Pushing the post to talk. Cool. So short, concise, no unnecessary words or any fluff. That is brevity. Any questions to brevity? Especially remember this thing. Think, push, speak. Then we get on to the last, which is clarity. Now, based on the first two factors, um, your message must still remain clear and understandable. Now, just as brevity, clarity also requires a proper selection of words and without redundancy, but also proper pronunciation, correct use of pro words and radio procedures. Now, for example, if a player has a heavy accent, it may be necessary for them to slow down in order to ensure correct pronunciation for themselves and that the receiving call sign is actually hearing the signal correctly. This also means that you must be must understand the proper meaning and use of a pro word so you certainly do not uh, use uh, one word whereas another would have been the correct one to use so you start out or so you end up sending a different meaning than what you intended to do. That is clarity. Clarity in your voice and clarity in the words you choose. Any questions to clarity? Lester, what is accuracy? Accuracy means that uh, we have to give um, an, an uh, e exact. Uh, we have to give an information that we actually observe. Um, yes, the information we pass on must be accurate. Yes. Brevity, Mosper. Brevity should be uh, the only uh, important words uh, that uh, should be uh, transmitted in uh, one transmission. So no no unnecessary words to uh, confuse or uh, to mean something else other than uh, we uh, intended to transmit. Exactly. So Shitsky, I mentioned three words you could use to help you with brevity. Um, think, push, talk. Exactly. Think, push, speak. That's what, no matter how you get it. Right? There was one way you could help yourself with brevity. Whisper. By doing something. Nope. <laughs> Something you could do inside your head before you send the signal. Think about what you want to say before you say it. 
Exactly. Run it whole run the whole signal through inside your head. If you want to send a, a contract report using the Salter format, run that entire thing through inside your head, and then you can send it. That's some simple and easy ways to ensure brevity. Uh, perfect. Clarity. Uh, make sure that the guy that you're trying to talk to understands what you're saying, so if you have a he heavy accent, try to speak slower. Yes. Also, correct use of what sort of words? The pro words. Yes. Coolio. For those of you who do not know, pro words means procedure words. We'll get down to them uh, uh, at the near the end of the lesson. Cool. Are there now any questions for accuracy, brevity, and clarity? Remember, this is a cornerstone. Of proper communication. Radio, I want to jump on to the next part, which is a smaller part, but rather it's essential still. And this is the components of a signal. Now, this might seem a bit long haired and whatnot, but nevertheless, this is just give you a basic understanding of how we construct a signal or message to each other. Now, the signal compo is composed of four parts. We have the first one, which is the call signs, second, initiating the traffic, three, the message, and fourth part, ending the traffic. Now, one, call signs. This is the call signs of the sender and receiver. This sounds very, very simple than this. And these must be correct as to avoid confusion and that the information is passed along to the intended uh, person. So, have your own call sign in order and be certain of the call sign of the person you intend to talk to. This goes without saying. 2. Initiating the traffic. The sender establish... Um, sorry? Part 2 of the signal is establishing traffic. The sender establishing contact with the receiver and the receiver telling he is ready to send... Oh, sorry, to receive the signal. Of part three, the message. The message is the information in the form of a report or coordination the sender wants the receiver to know. And we have fourth, last part, which is ending traffic. This is where the sender or the receiver ends the signal and the net again becomes available to others. So, an example of this could be, let's say, reddish, this is JB. I have a signal for Reddish, his call sign is his name, my call sign is my name. That way I've just getting the first part out, which is the call signs, and also initiating the traffic. And Reddish then replies. Go okay, for Reddish. Go for Reddish, that's one way. And this is where then we finish part two of Reddish telling me he's ready to receive my signal, and I'll then give Reddish him my message which is the third part of the signal, which is, you look mighty fine today. Over. Thank you for that. Ow. Boom. Last part you have registered there was ending the signal, i.e. ending the traffic. So, one, call signs, first part, second part, initiating the traffic, third part, the message, fourth, ending the traffic. That is the basic four components of a signal. Any questions to the four parts of a signal? Call signs, initiating traffic, message, ending traffic. Right, yeah? Sweet. Shortest section in this course by far. Good. Um, I, I owe to you to tell you a bit, uh, to tell you something quickly here. Um, in the past, it's something I forgot during the introduction. In the past, a uh, uh, the RTU courses we held had a lot of focus on, for example, on radios, how you properly use them, the, the different radios within ACA and something like that, and all those sort of things. We've completely cut these parts out of the courses, new RTU courses we're going to run. This is in part because one, it's something you can read yourself to. Two. It doesn't really affect gameplay on the server, whether or not you know all the knobs and bips and bops of a radio. 
three, what instead affects the server is you being able to properly use the radio, i.e. send it, and use the correct reports, and also the ABC, so that's entirely what we're going to focus on today. As I also mentioned in the sign-up thread, um, and I hope you've all read quickly up on the uh, one thread. Not that we're going to go in-depth with it at all. Cool. So, that out of the way, we're going to move on to the third part of the course, which is types of net and organization. We're going to talk a little about what is a net and also how is it usually organized in a mission on the primary and what makes sense, what does not make sense. So, a radio net is a radio frequency where one or several call signs are signed to and use it for their communications. A net exists all the way down from the squat level all the way up to planetary communication via satellites. In UO, we usually operate on a simple set of uh, nets due to the size of emissions and the assets available to us. Now there are four nets that we use in UO. The first one is the squat level. Now, this is the lowest form of radio communication that happens and it is usually with the uh, PRC 343 also known as the short range that this um, is done. It is used primarily by the squad leader to communicate with his fighting leaders but sometimes all squad members may also be uh, equipped with the 343 radio. Radio discipline is a bit more lax on this level. It's a bit okay to you know, joke around on the 343 and so on and so forth when nothing is happening. But please send a signal by as minimum using your names instead of call signs if there are absolutely none assigned to you down on the individual squad member level which there rarely are but still use the correct initiation and ending of traffic and of course still use the proper pro words so for example one an example of this could be Dave this is Smith over Smith over I see you over Roger you look nice out simple thing, very lax, but he still uses the names so you know who is sending, who is he sending to, and also by using over, he lets them know, I finished my message, you may now reply, and by using out, the me this uh, signal is now done. So, still use names to call up to each other, so, not, so it's not just a, I see two tanks, who the fuck is I? Or something, something, something. Use your names and pro, pro words. Then we'll get up to platoon level communications. Now, the platoon net is used for communication between the platoon leader, the platoon 2IC, the squad leader, and vehicle commanders, if you happen to be some sort of uh, mechanized or motorized unit. Radio discipline is enforced on the platoon net by using the ABC and some template reports. Most call signs on this net will be equipped with a handheld radio, such as, for example, the PRC 148 or the PRC 152. Now, these are capable of long range communications, for example, up to 5 kilometers in the case of the PRC 148 and beyond uh, by the uh, 152 if you have the right core uh, conditions, such as, for example, uh, terrain has a huge influence on this and it is modeled in Acre. So go on the other side of the mountain and you might not be able to hear each other even though it's just one kilometer in between you. Cool. Then we get up to company level communications. So at UO, the company net is usually the highest net that you would encounter in a mission. Um, this is simply just given the size of the missions that we have the player base, size of the player base, and also what is feasibly possible without every server shitting yourself because of armor. And the net is used for communication in between the company commander and his subordinate platoons, but also houses the supporting assets such as logistical, engineer, or fire support assets if they are not attached to a lower unit, for example, a platoon. Most core signs on a company net are the RTOs which is, fine enough, radio telephone operators. 
and these guys tied together different platoons and five port nets worth the call. The call signs will be issued with either these call signs will be issued with either powerful handheld radios such as the PRC-152 or man pack radios such as the PRC-77 and PRC-117 Foxtrot. We have the fire support control net, the fourth and last. And this net is reserved for communications between, for example, the forward and server to its artillery, the JTAC to its aircraft. This net will usually con will contain the, uh, the fire direction center at the artillery, the pilot of an aircraft, alongside with the RTOs of the forward and server and the JTAC. So those are the four nets we use we operate with here at UO. Squad level, platoon level, company level, and fire support control net. Um one thing I've seen before, um or how let me rephrase that. The way you want to ideally run things when you get up onto a company is that you have the RTOs talking to each other. Before I've seen an experience where we have, for example, two platoons fully equipped, fully manned out, and they also have their RTOs for their platoon leaders and whatnot, so they can then have communication upwards towards company. And I've seen some company commanders do a very odd thing where they assign their own RTO to go on to, for example, second platoon's platoon net, while the company commander himself goes on to first platoon's platoon net. What you end up having there is call signs unnecessarily on other on other radio nets. What this also does is that you have too much cluttering in there because all of a sudden you have a company commander on your platoon net or a company RTO on your platoon net having to issue orders over squad leaders, vehicle commanders over fighting you sometimes fighting these may also be issued with long range radio so they can easily pick up if, if for example their squad leader should go down so you clutter up the net again which is completely unnecessary you have the platoon nets that is for use by the platoon leader to communicate with his platoon sergeant squad leaders and the vehicle commanders you then have your platoon leader's RTO on company net where you also have, for example, you could have the company commander on the net so he can talk directly to the platoon RTOs, or you could have a uh, the sorry the company commander's RTO on the company net. So that ties together the entire company, i.e., the company headquarters and the subordinate platoons. That way, the platoon nets, and you might also have a company platoon net for yourself. Are kept completely clear of any unnecessary call signs, which, as mentioned earlier, in ABC is very, very important. Are there any questions to the types of net and organization you can account here at UO? Hard wash. Yep. Uh, uh, it was in the military, and we got, we knew like the radio nets, and the question is like, is it? proper to use names even at squad level net. I know that maybe it doesn't apply as, as much as a disciplined radio net as the others, but is it okay to use names? In UO, absolutely not proper. In Would you do real that in world, real life? real life, well, Danish army, no problem down at squad level. Once we get onto platoon nets and up, uh, then we don't use names. Yeah. Then we use call signs. Because, well, like, what the hell is the enemy supposed to do with my real name? Like, okay, they know a guy ca called Michael who's fucking running around with a 343, so what? Yeah. Not really gonna get anything from it. That's at least in a conventional war. So you're not what should be in there. So, uh, what's the difference between 1 6 and 1 6 Romeo? Is Romeo like the RTO speaking? 1 6, this is um, by using the. Uh, uh, U.S. Army call signs. First one would denote that it is first platoon. Six would denote that it is the platoon leader. 
So this means that it is first platoon leader, 1-6. Romeo is the phonetic uh, letter given to the uh, RTO as his call sign. So he becomes 1-6 Romeo. R for Romeo. And this, of course, denotes that he is first platoon, platoon leader's radio man. For example, in the Danish army, we call him uh, his. He is called, for example, one five Oscar because our platoon leader's call sign is five for the platoon leader, but still denotes one as the platoon. You so Romeo the, means, yeah. Mention maybe the actual as well. No, one six actual. No, there's no reason to use one six actual because there's no other than him. He is one six. Copy. If he if he dies and the platoon sergeant takes over, the platoon sergeant is still going to be one seven. You don't oh. start switching around. Yeah, just a quick. You don't start switching around other people to different call signs during the mission. Once if someone goes down. Yep. So I just, I just wanted to clarify that the five and the six they would denote the person within the platoon HQ, correct? Yes, in the U.S. call sign six one six denotes the first platoon uh, platoon leader, and in the Danish army, as I just mentioned, as another example, it's just that we use five instead of six to denote our platoon leader. So during a mission, if you're just a squad leader of let's say one two, and you wish to send a message to platoon HQ, it doesn't matter who answers, you would just say one. This is one. No, you would then say six one six. This is one two, or you could return to say since this is a platoon net, you could return to say six. This is two. You then cut again, cut down the words used in the signal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, question: um, If my squad leader goes down, and let's say I'm the grenadier, if I have to talk to uh, platoon level, would I say this is first? I did not think about what my squad was called. Let's just say I'm first section. Grenadier, would it then just, then just say one Grenadier to one six? Oh. When we're down at that level, you can, when we get down to squat level, yes, you can assume the call sign of your squat leader simply because, uh, let's say, your much easier example would be that you're in a your first squad, there's two fighting leaders. One of them is uh, one one alpha. The other is one one bravo. That's their call sign. The one one, the squad leader, dies. One alpha, one one alpha takes command of the squad. He will then use his own call sign, just to denote. And he simply just call up one six. This is one one alpha taking command of first squad. Over. This is one six. Copy out. Now, if for example, we're in a situation where all the fucking fighting leaders have died. Died, and you, as a grenadier, are the next man in line to take up the radio. If you want to use your fighting leader's call sign, if you want to use your squad leader's call sign as either 1 1 Alpha, 1 1 Bravo, or 1 1, that's perfectly fine. It just needs to establish some sort of contact with the unit again. And that, when you're that low on guys, that usually means you've just been into combat, you're still in combat. So, really faffing about with the small details doesn't really fucking matter. Just as long as we know which squad is talking now and who, who is so to speak in command there. So it would just be one six. This is one one grenadier taking command of first squad over. And then he will probably either answer you by by this is one six copy out. And then you can just assume one one as your call sign. That's not really a deal. He's still going to be able to know what unit he's talking to can of course assign you a uh, directly tell you that you are now 1-1 one, one. that's perfectly fine you can say that you are this is uh, one, gren one one grenadier taking command I am now 1-1 one, one actual over this just means that you are now the new 1-1 one, one. alright yeah, it seems sense. to I know I, may, I said a lot of small examples here but it's basically you assume either the call sign of your fire team leader, or you assume the call sign of your squad leader. Doesn't really fucking matter in either way. Cool. 
Sweet. Now we're going to get on to pro words and their use. Now, pro words, as I mentioned earlier, was a uh, abbreviation of procedure words. They're a series of words that have a standard meaning attached to it. This is to shorten signals by having a single word sometimes to replace entire sentences and also to avoid confusion. So, we have a list here. I'm going to slow, shortly uh, or slowly go through them and we'll talk about them as we go. So, if you have any questions as we go down, just uh, let me know. So, the first pro word we have is all call signs. This is very simple. This is a me meaning that if I initiate my uh, traffic by saying all call signs, this is 1 6, that literally means that. This is a message for all call signs on this net. Very, very simple. All right. Another pro word is break, and this is something you're going to hear in a lot of iterations on the server, I know this for certain. Break is used to divide a long message into points. Now, for example, I could be sending a contact report using the salter like 1-6, this is 1-1, one, one, contact report, over. This is 1-6, send, over. Two enemy infantry sections with BMPs moving alongside MSR iron, moving north, break, located at grid 1-2-3, Five six seven. Time now. I'm continuing my observation. Over. This is one six. Solid copy out. I use the break to divide up the long message that I have, so it doesn't just go out in one big, bleh, one big fucking line. This is easy for myself. Also easy for the other per for the person on the other end to then uh, receive the message. When you say break. The net is still yours, because it is still your signal. You have not set out yet. You have not released the net, so to speak. But others may still interrupt if they have some sort of important report to speak. So, for example, if I am giving a small situation report to my platoon leader, but all of a sudden 1-3 comes into contact and I'm sitting here yapping and slowly blah 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 break, and all of a sudden he goes, all call signs, this is 1-3, contact, contact, wait out, for example. He then interrupts my signal in order to give a signal that's much more important. That's perfectly fine. So when you say break, and they have still yours, others can interrupt if they have more important signals, and you usually wait around two seconds before you start transmitting again after you said break. On the server, you're going to hear people interrupt other signals using break, 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 break. That is not correct. That's not the proper use of the word break. It does not mean I am interrupting your signal in order to send another of my own. Alright? <laughs> <laughs> Good enough. We'll cover that in a bit, what you actually then use. So, is everyone crystal clear on break? Yep. Sweet. And we'll get down to copy. Now, this is used to acknowledge the message sent to you, that you have received the signal and understood it. And you use copy when you have received an information. And we differentiate between an information and an order. Copy is something used when you receive an information. So, for example, it could be a fucking Fogelwitz. This is JB. This is Fogelwitz. Or la 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 la. My information to him then will be, well, you smell like poop. JB out. Or sorry, um, J. You smell like poop. Over. Fogelwitz replies with, copy. Fuck you. Out. I've given him information that he apparently smells like poop. Right, we're going to get down to what you then say if you receive an order. We're going to get on later. And we have 
good copy and solid copy, which are the exact same as copy. Again, used to acknowledge information. Uh, sorry, used to acknowledge the message sent to you. You've received the signal, understood it, and you use it when you have received information. Cool. How copy is used to confirm that the receiver has received and understood the message. So, for example, it could be Beaking. This is JB, over. Beaking, over. It seems your shoes are way too small and I think you should go down and replace them. How copy, over. I copy. I will uh, replace my shoes immediately. Over. Thank you. JB out. Boom. When I say how copy, I ask him to confirm my message that he has understood it. It's a more way of emphasizing that this message I'm about, that I've sent to you is important, that it's important for me that you understood the message. Question. Yep. Would you use how copy in giving orders? You could do use that, yes. I guess again. Question. Yep. Uh, yeah, but go ahead. <laughs> okay, because you can yeah you can use half copy when, whenever you want. If you're passing along information, like for example, is it a sit rep, or if you're giving them an order, if it's something that's important to you, they uh, that you un know that they understand. You can say how copy, and they will then confirm to you that they have received and understood this. Right? And a question over here? Hot was the thing yeah. was? Yeah. Uh, can you use how copy to check uh, if the net is like solid? Uh, do they re receive the message properly? Like, does it break up or anything? If you're in the city, you're thinking a bit along the lines of a radio check, but yeah. you could, for example, get into a situation where the net is, is, or let's say that the two call signs are so far apart, it's getting a bit, it's not so, uh, it's not very clear on the radio, and it might not be so loud anymore. So you can send a how copy after you send a uh, signal, because the inf uh, sorry, because the signal is so bad that you just want to make sure that they've understood it. But as a radio check, no. Okay. We have another thing for that, and we're also going to cover radio checks a bit, in a bit. Cool. Then we get on to contact. And this is when the sender is in contact and has been engaged by the enemy. And this is an important thing to differentiate. This is when we are in a firefight that this is getting sent. It would usually be set first as part of the preliminary report to a Salter report, which is all call signs, this is 1-1, one, one, contact, contact, wait out. Literally meaning, I am engaged with the enemy, or the enemy has engaged me. Yes? Right. Next one, check fire. This is to cease fire and confirm your targets as either friend or foe. Many times, this of course will happen when we're in a friendly fire situation. Someone has opened up on own forces and it gets called out on net, like for example, all call sign, this is 1-1, one, one, check fire, check fire, out. Or if I already know now who's firing at me, 1-2, this is 1-1, one, one, check fire, check fire, over. This is 1-2, check fire, out. Or checking fire, out. Yes? So cease fire and confirm your targets as friend or foe. Then we have lock, L O C, which is short for location. And of course, you pronounce it as a lock, something you would lock. Nothing real big to that. Now we'll get to some two of probably the most important ones. Over. Over means my message to you is complete you may reply to me. This is literally going, I've finished talking to you, you may now give me your reply. Then we have out, and some people confuse these yes, every once in a while. Out means this signal is over. Do not reply. 
and then the net is free again. Because many times I hear people um, going, like for example, I could be 1-1, one, one, this is 1-6, I want you to move to the right, out. And then 1-1 one, one comes up, 1-1, one, one, solid copy, out. Like, no, there's absolutely no need for you to do that. This is also what you sometimes can refer to as an out signal, i.e. you've been giving a direct order to do so, and you just comply with it as fast as possible. This is usually something that happens in combat, where we again want to keep the signals as short as possible. But, if there's been an out, that means the net is free, and if you want to talk to that person again, you have to go 1-6, this is 1-1. One, one. Don't you sure you want me to move to the left? Over. This is 1-6. Yeah, go ahead, move to the left, out. Alright? That's the difference between over and out. And we have Oscar Mike. This is not a uh, a, a pro word per se that is in uh, any field manuals, but it's one you're going to be uh, here heard nevertheless, so it's, uh, it's worth getting in here. And Oscar Mike, again for the phonetic alphabet, means on the move, that I am moving. One one. This is one six. Over. This is one one over. I want you to move f even further to your left. Over. One one. Oscar Mike out. Boom. I am moving. All right. We have Roger, which means I understand. And again, you use this when you when you have received information. And we get into two other very very important <laughs> the first is repeat and this is not something you say when you're not sure of what another person has said to you on the radio repeat is when you ask that an artillery unit on aircraft repeat the last fire mission or close air support mission i.e. do the same thing again if you've received the signal and for some reason did get all of it and you want to have it, the other person, the sender, send it again you say for example, one six, this is one one, say again, over and then one six will come on and repeat his, and say his signal again so remember that difference this is especially important if you find yourself in forward observer or JTAG role or being an RTO for either of those. What about uh, repeat last? Uh, just completely re avoid repeat. That's why we just use say again. That way there's only one way to say that. Again. Again. Again, another, uh, again another way to cut down confusion and whatnot. So there's just one word for the thing you want them to do. It's just say again. We have that's one of the f uh, four final words. It's send. Completely obli uh, obvious what this is. This is send your transmission. And we have another two, which are easily confused, which is wait. Now wait is when you hold a three to five second pause. The net is still yours, but others may still interrupt if they have important reports to come with. Wait is usually used when for example, it could be that I am some platoon leader's RTO and I've been asked to send a signal to a company. I've begun my traffic to a company and I'm sending it, but all the while my platoon leader is getting fed, for example, another piece of information from one of his squad leaders. He then tells me this and I just say, wait, I hear what he has to say, how does this correspond to my, how does this affect my signal? And then I continue the signal after these three to five seconds has gone by using the information that I've just been given or updated or found out or whatever. That's the difference between break and wait. Break used to break up a longer message into points. Wait is literally when like I just need a couple of seconds here to figure something out or something is happening. The net is still yours but others may still interrupt if they have important reports. Then we have wait out. Now this of course is a combination of wait and out 
but it's heard many times and is more or less a pro in itself. This is used when you either need to collect or confirm information and that you will send a signal back once you are able to. As I mentioned before, the classic one is all call signs, this is 1 1, contact, contact, wait out. You give them the preliminary, preliminary report to the contact report and then literally also saying, telling them, wait out, I will get back to you once I can send you a full SALTA report. It may just be that you're being asked a question from um, company net and you're sitting as your uh, platoonius RTO uh, going, 1-6 Romeo, this is Archer 6 Romeo. What is your lock stat over? 1-6 Romeo, wait out. Um, 6, what, where the fuck are we? Oh, we're there, 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 and coordinates 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, cool. Archer 6 Romeo, this is 1-6 Romeo, we are coordinates 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, over. Archer 6 mm -hmm. Romeo, solid copy out. What about standby? Just use wait, wait out, same thing. It's a, it's you, it's the exact same effect you get, except we just use one singular word for it. So even though you may hear other persons on the server use, for example, stand by or repeat last, just think for yourself. This is the effect he wants with the word he's using, but I'm still gonna keep on saying, say again, wait, or wait out. At one point, these people who are saying it wrong on the server will hopefully come in here, and once they're done with an RTO course, then you will all be using the exact same pro words. Right? So there's no reason that we need to invent other things right now. Or use wrong pro words. Radio? Last pro word that we have is Wilco. And it's a subtraction of will comply. This means that I have understood and will carry out your order. And this is what you use when you have received an order. So, for example, 1-1, one, one, this is 1-6, one, over. 1-1, one, one, over. I want you to prepare to assault... Um, oh, sorry. I want you to assault right side of the trench. Over. 1-1 one, one, will go out. I will comply with the order. 1-6 has just ordered me to assault the right-hand trench. Alright? So, just off the bat, are there any questions to the pro words and the use of them? And then I'm quickly just going to run them all down again. By the way, has anyone here printed out that action RTO action card? I have it open. Yep. Cool, yo. Yep. So, yeah, I highly advise you print that uh, thing out and uh, use it so you can just have it lying somewhere. Quickly have a look at it. You can see the pro words, they're all there. Have the entire phonetic alphabets and all the reports that will be useful, uh, useful for you as, a, uh, as an RTO. So, as I said to begin with, we have all call signs, break, copy good copy and solid copy, hard copy, contact, check fire, lock for location, over, out, Oscar Mike, Roger, repeat when you want a fire support unit to do the same fire mission again. You have say again when you want someone to resend that transmission. You have send, wait, wait out, and Wilco. That's pretty much the only pro watch you're ever going to be needing as an RTO or just as any other person with a radio. I oh, forgot to mention this too. This RTO it might be called the RTO course, but everything you're taught in here is still applicable if you're a squad leader, or fighting leader, or anything else. Someone had a question? Uh, yeah, should a uh, flash be considered a part of pro watch? Yes, I completely forgot about it. Um, instead of saying break, 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 instead use flash. So, flash, flash, flash. All call signs, this is 1 3. Contact, contact, wait out. That's the pro we're going to use 
if you absolutely need to interrupt a signal that is ongoing between two others but you know your signal is absolutely more important than the weather that they are talking about or how they how they all smell of poop or something alright good thing caught up on that one take a piece of candy there we go rewards cool Th diabetes <laughs> diabetes class 102 yeah we had diabetes class 101 yesterday on the formalization course and I have so much candy cool the last part before the practical exercises and this is pretty much the bread and butter of any person with the radio and that is the radio reports now we already have ABC and ProWords to help us with uh, using effective radio communications another way again to shorten our radio signals and speed up the passing information is by using some radio reports. Now reports are a standardized template for the order in which we send the formation. We have a couple at Euro and these are the ones going to be mostly used either by you as a squad leader, platoon leader or as a RTO. We have of course first the radio chair not so much a report in itself, but it's still important to um, for everyone to know how to conduct a proper radio check. Since no communication, no operation, you can keep that tagline in mind. If we kind of talk to each other, we're not really effective. Might as well fucking stay home. Then we have the SALTA report, which is the report we use for sending contract reports. We have the SIT rep situational report. We have a log stat, location status. I have a request for fire support. So that is one of that. One, two, three, four, five small reports you can learn here. Should be easy to remember, and they are on your action cards. First off, a radio check. A radio check is conducted to ensure that uh, all the players and all the call signs are on the right channel and frequency. It is and should always be conducted before the mission begins in order to assure that you have effective communication and no one are on the wrong net. This is seen multiple times and you're definitely going to experience this uh, down at the SWAT level communication, someone being on the wrong 343 channel. It's an absolute classic. The range can be done on all levels, all the way from fire team to company upwards. And as a standard, always check in in the numerical order of your call sign. Like, you no, know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whoever else is there. Or in a specified order given in the message. So, for radio check, you start out by initiating the traffic. You send the message, which in this case is radio check. You then confirm the message and end traffic. The first example we have is, for example, if I'm conducting this on the 343 inside a squad where I give a specific order in which I want the people to check back in. And exa this example will be, first one, this is JB, in order of Abe, Bill, Charlie, Dwight, Eric, radio check, over. Abe, loud and clear, over. Bill, loud and clear, over. So on, so on, so on, until everyone's been through. This is Dave. Read you all loud and clear. Out. Simple as pie. Do we all actually have a one for eight right now? I don't have no. any radio. Nope. No. Oh, cool. Fuck it. We'll just do it by voice then. So. Let's see. Fancy. You're the squad yeah. leader. Your squad is Tovshitsky, Lester, Fandu, Fogo, and Best Second. Conduct a radio check wherein you specify an order. Uh, sorry, who was, who was the last guy? Uh, best Second. First squad, this is Bunzi, in order of uh, Tovshitsky, Lester, Fandu, and Best Second. Radio check, over. Tovshitsky, loud and clear. 
Lester, loud and clear. Over. Fed do loud and clear. Over. Best? Best, loud and clear. Over. This is Ponzi, reach you all loud and clear. Out. Boom, he says Pete. You forgot Fogel, but we can look past that. So we'll just leave him behind. Cool. Easy, simple way to do this. You can use this as a part of your uh, orbit at the beginning of a uh, a mission. All right. Then we have the other one where we use the numerical uh, order. And an example of this could be all call signs. This is one six. Radio check over. One one loud and clear over. One two. Loud and clear over. One three, loud and clear over. And if there's one fours, one fives, one sevens, one eight, one nines, hell, you might even have fucking one elevens or whatnot. I don't care. It doesn't really matter. It just goes in a numerical order. And in the end, it is. This is one six. Read you all loud and clear. Out. That makes it a hell of a lot easier to keep a, to keep a you know, charge of. Who's actually checked in? Who hasn't done it yet? Who do, do I need to send what someone over there in order to get them onto the right channel or, or what? Or just so we keep order of who has conducted, uh, or sorry, who is on net and can receive transmissions? Yeah. Easiest pie. Easiest pie spy. Cool. Then we get on to Salter, which is the contact report. Now. Salter is used for sending a contact report on the platoon level and upwards. So, as soon as the firefight begins and the contact is underway, one should send a preliminary, pre preliminary warning. And as I mentioned earlier, that we do this because it will let others know exactly who is in contact and that a full Salter report will follow as soon as that person is. Um, able to send it. So, what would the preliminary contact report be, Hogwash? Uh, one six. This is one one message over. Oh, it, it will be, be contact report. No, the preliminary contact report would be all call signs. This is one one contact contact. Wait out. Short and concise and to the point. I am in contact. Wait out. If you have the uh, the overhead for it, you could, for example, say, all call signs, this is one, contact right, contact right, wait out. For example, or contact front or something, or build something into it if you have the time to it. Whisper? Would you use contact, contact, wait out if you observed the enemy but weren't in contact with them? you just seen them? No. I... You wouldn't really. What you use there instead is, for example, all call signs, this is one. Uh, all call signs, this is one, one. Eyes on enemy, wait out. Or sighting or visual. You can use those words, for example. Because when you say contact, you're denoting that you are in contact, as i.e., firefight. Or that you are very imminent about to be. So it's a, it's a contact on site. Yeah. You say sighting. Okay. All call on science. This is 1-1. One, one. Sighting on enemy. Right? Cool. That's preliminary contact report. Now, as an RTO, and you're in the platoon, and it's 1-1 one, one getting into contact, what do you think you have to send up to company? Same thing. Exactly. The exact same thing. Alpha 6 Romeo. This is 1 6 Romeo. Contact, contact. Wait out. This way, company now also knows that your platoon has come into contact. This is valuable information for them to know so they can then either start dressing, sorry, re reassigning fire support units for you, or, or are now to begin making thoughts, uh, plans about how can I support them where they are right now. For example, move another platoon to them or something like that. 
the sooner we know someone is in contact, the faster we can react and actually do something about it. That is the purpose of the preliminary warning. Sorry, preliminary contact report. Good. Now, things are quiet down. Or, for example, we've seen the enemy and they have not seen us. Then we send the SALTER. The SALTER stands for S, size of the enemy, A, activity of the enemy, L, location of the enemy, T, time of sighting or contact, and A, action taken by own forces. So, in the first one, S, size of the enemy, report how many are we seeing? You can use numbers or you can use unit size such as fire team, squad, platoon minus platoon, platoon plus for example, that's also a possibility, or a company or all of a sudden there's a fucking Russian armored division rolling your way. That's all cool. But again, accuracy. Only report what you see. Don't make take any guesses. Activity of the enemy. What are they doing? Have they fired on you? Well, then it, what did they fire with you on? They will fire on with you. Proper. <laughs> what did they fire with? They use machine guns, RPGs, mortars, rifles. Was there a fucking tank, IV firing at you? Has it been? Was it auto cannon? Was it just a tank cannon? Missiles, ATGMs, what not? Give something. As much as you can, if possible. Are they? patrolling? What formation are they in? What direction are they moving? Do they seem aware? Are they being cautious? Have they begun moving by bounding maneuvers or are they still just going by traveling or by traveling? All these sort of information about what is the enemy actually doing. It could be, for example, that you know, you've know you been fired upon so you report that they open up with machine guns and they are now bounding towards my position. That's one way, for example, to say the activity of the enemy, if that's what's happening. L. Location of the enemy. Where are they? You can use grids, uh, if you know or are now where they are, or you're able to quickly take them. You can use, for example, a reference point, um, if there is a, uh, a TRP somewhere, a fucking church tower. You see the enemy, and they're 200 meters to the right of the TRP. Zero uh, zero one. Well, you just say during your uh, during location of the report, enemy located 200 meters east of TRP zero zero one. Everyone knows what that is now. Cool. Time of sighting or contact. Usually, it is just time now, but it can be, for example, that you've made a sighting, and you can first report on it sometime afterwards. For example. If they've been walking so fucking close to you, but haven't discovered you, but if you were to send a signal or raise your voice, they would discover you. So it could be that the contact report you're sending was actually the enemy passing by you five minutes ago, could be two minutes ago. Okay? Then we have at the end action taken by own forces. What are you doing? What do you intend to do? Do you actually have any suggestions of what? Um, you should do, could do, or perhaps what others should do. Basically the same as activity of the enemy, except this is action taken by own forces. Right? So that is the Salter report. So, example of this is 16, this is 1-1, one, one, contact report, over. This is 1-6, send, over. Enemy infantry section, moving in staggered column. MSR, iron, from south to north at grid one, two, three, four, five, six. Time now. My squad is online, ready to engage. I'll continue observing the the enemy. Over. Copy. Holding position. Out. That's one way to send a contact report. The other one could be. Yep. Uh, like that that example kind of implies that you're not actually in contact. It's uh, they're uh, in staggered column moving. Yes, control. this right here is a uh, it's a sighting. Yeah. Now, another example where you actually are in contact um, could be where you have both the preliminary warning, uh, sorry, preliminary contact report, and also the full salter would be you know, walking along. The contact begins. 
All calls lines, this is one. Contact, contact, wait out. Bum, 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 bum. Time goes on, time goes on. 30, 20 seconds later, or something like that. Six, this is one. Contact report, over. This is six, send over. One, T72. Open fire with cannon on my squad. Located at grid 123. 456 on the western side of the church in hold down position. Time, two minutes ago. I have disengaged and moved back. Over. Copy. Hold in position. Six out. Right? Easy as peasy. So you all see how we use this template to build up all the necessary information that we need and provide them in an order that's easy to understand. Are there any questions to the Psalter? Silence is consent, there is none. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you the second example, um, which is why we're walking along. Uh, I'm a squad leader, I'm 1-1, one, one, and all of a sudden, I get engaged by someone or something. I send out my preliminary contact report, which is, all call signs, this is 1-1, one, one. contact, contact, wait out. <laughs> if I already now know, for example, it's contact because of um, it's a tank for some firing on me. I could go, literally go. All call sign. This is one one. Contact tank. Contact tank. Wait out. For example, I've given my wait out. What you all remember? What did wait out mean? You're onto the right thing, um, because I needed I need to collect or confirm information before I then can send a complete uh, report. Usually, this will happen with contact reports. Um, oh, w sorry, wait out will happen with contact reports. But yes, not to break up a message, but wait out, I need to collect this information, the net is free. And I will return to you later. Right? Cool. So then, firefight goes on. I've now got all the information that I need to send the full contact report. So I send it, and it goes... One six. This is one one. Contact report over. This is one six. Send over. One T seventy two. Open fire with cannon on my squad. Located at grid one two three four five six. On the western side of the church, in hold down position. Time two minutes ago. I have disengaged and moved back over. Copy. Hold in position, six out. Was that something useful, Vinicus? Yes, thank you. Perfect! Other questions for the Salter? Yeah. Uh, it, it could be just, when you, whenever you say that, I don't know if you're saying hold in position or holding position. It's your hold, response. Hold in board. position. Okay, yeah, a whole gotcha. position. Yeah, it's same thing, really. Just say, just yeah, whole position. Again, a good example of priority clarity. So whole position. Radio. Other questions for the Salter. Sweet. Moving on. Sit rep. Situation report. The situation report is given to superior either upon your own initiative or his request or that you requested from your superior, for example. And the report is meant to attain situational awareness on the situation and the location of the call sign. For this, we also have a small acronym for it, which is LSOS. It is location, situation at the grid, own actions, and support needed, if there is any support needed. So, location, what do we use there? What can we use? Grid. Grids. Grids. Terrain features. Reference. Reference points, yes. Exactly. We have situation at the grid. Well, what is the situation? Am I rearming? Is everything acquired? Is there civilians or anything nearby? Have I lost contact with the enemy? Uh, 
how long ago was that? Pfft, like, everything, just, just, what is the situation with your unit? Where you're at? Goes for yourself and for your surroundings, if there's anything worthwhile reporting on. Own actions? What am I actually doing? Or what do I intend to do? And at the end, support needed, if there's any needed, if support for example could be in the form of, of extra ammunition in order to rearm, it could be you require medical support, you could even require engineer support because your vehicle has flipped itself over due to armor. For example. So sit reps is something you can give upwards and downwards, but it's also something you can request from people above you. Usually a platoon leader, hopefully, should have better situational awareness than those beneath him. So if you've just been lying in position, the same place for 10 minutes and nothing's going on, you could ask, literally go, 1-6, this is 1-1, one, one, requesting sit rep over. 1-6 will then come back and give you, of course not necessarily to give you his location, if you all know where you are and your top platoon together. Well then, what is the situation? What are our own actions? What are we supposed to do? What is company going to do? What is company's intent, for example? And, well, do we need something for it? Or does he something need something from us? That's one way, for example, requesting a sit rep from above. As squad leaders, it is important that you constantly keep on feeding your subordinates, your fire team members, fire team leaders, with sit reps. That's going to be covered in fire team leadership and squad leadership courses. Cool. So, the acronym for SITREP, LSOS. L S O S. Right? Questions for the SITREP. Silence is consent. We'll get into Lockstat, which is probably the easiest and shortest one of them all. Location status. And there are Locks that report is used for quickly attaining a call sign's position. Very, very simple. So what you have to send back when 1-1, one, one, this is 1-6, send locks that over. You send the grid of your location and your displacement in the grid, i.e. how am I placed here, where I am. Alright? So it could be, it could be, for example, 1-6 Romeo, this is Alpha-6 Romeo. Send locks that over. This is 1-6 Romeo. Platoon, online, moving through forest at grid 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Moving north, halting at the edge of the forest. Over. Alpha-6 Romeo, so I'll copy out. Boom. Right? Questions for the lock stat. No? Yeah. Absolutely exciting report. Cool. Last report, before we go out and actually do this in practice, is the request for fire support report. This is the fun thing. This is where you get to call in shit. And everyone can do this. From a squad leader, fire team leader, and above. This is a report you use when you don't, for example, have an F or forward observe for artillery or JTAC, but you still have these assets available somehow. It could be the F or JTAC has died or something. But it's also important to remember that you cannot just call these things in on your own. You can't sit as a fucking fire team leader call in a goddamn A-10 on something. These things need to be clear upwards first with your squad leader, then to your platoon leader, then upwards if necessary. Don't just fucking call them in just because you know the report for it, alright? Cool you. Now, we have another acronym for request for fire support, and that is TTFG. That means target, location, where you give grit and elevation, target description, friendly location, and then at the end, get confirmation. Some of you might have heard this previously as an, uh, named as an all arms call for fire. This is pretty much what you're down to. This is a last ditch effort to get in fire support. Cool. Now, target description and friend location. 
you can also use marking, but you only use marking when you're calling in air support. So, if you're calling in uh, air support, markings makes it easier for the pilot to tell friend from foe. And markings we can use can be smoke, it can be a laser designator if he has uh, laser guided weapons, for example, the JDAMs or some cool shit like that. Or, for example, IR lasers, just a simple one on your rifle. The pilot has night vision, this is going on night, the IR laser is a easy to use tool in order to pinpoint an enemy. <clears throat> but remember to specify the color of smoked used to mark both the enemy and the friendly position, or if there's no marking used when you're calling in air support. Now, the FDC, the fire direction uh, center, the guy who actually calculates for the artillery, and the pilot will decide on the ordinance they suppose they will use based on your description of the target so you don't have to make that call yourself. They will take that assessment. So, if we were to call in, for example, a uh, airstrike or something, we're going to call in close air support, it could be November 1, this is uh, Alpha or Archer 1-1 one one requesting air support, over. This is November 1, send request, over. What was the first part of the acronym? First letter? T. T. What does that stand for? Target Tar description. No, like something target else. Location. Target location. What do we want in target location? Two things. Good reference in the altitude. Grid and elevation. Yes. So, it will be. Um, blah blah blah. This is number one. Send request over. Target location. Grid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. First T. Second T is Fan do I believe with you. Description, yeah? Description. And previously what has a target description been? If we take the uh a tank. S tank, for example. Number of enemies, for example. So type and number. Yeah, so we have for example target description single T eighty dock in at southwest corner of tree line. And we have in this case since we're calling in cast, we choose to mark it with something. We then say marked with red smoke. Cool. So that's T T target location with grid and elevation. Sometimes elevation uh, is not always necessary for a cast. And we have the uh, second T, target description. What markings are we using? Are we using any at all? If not, make sure to say so. Tar target not marked. And we get on to F. F stands for? Friendly location. Friendly location and? Uh, marking. Marking. What sort of marking are we using? What color is it? Or oh, we're not using any marking at all. So, F, friendly location would be friendly location. South, 800 meters, at grid, one two, th oh, sorry, one two three two, one eight six six. And if you're relaying your friend location by, in relation to the target, make sure you put on a cardinal direction, i.e. north, south, east, west, north, west, south, east, whatever, some of these, and then send a distance from the target. It could be, for example, that you're absolutely certain of where the target is, by grid reference, but you're not certain of where you are yourself by grid reference. So you can just relay by giving a cardinal direction and the distance to the target. And then, if you mark yourself with smoke, or whatever, or color, or if you're not marking yourself at all. Then, you get a confirmation on the information they just sent. Usually the pilot, when we're talking about close air support, will read back some of the information to you just uh, by uh, by standard, and then you will say information correct over. Pilot will then, in this case, probably give you uh, some information on where he's going to be coming from, where he's going to uh, be going out from, ingress, egress, 
what he's going to use on the target, because he makes that choice himself, in this case it could be guns and rockets, and the time on target. How long is it before I am able to deliver my ordnance? Right? For artillery, this could be steel rain. This is uh, Archer 1 1 requesting fire support over. This is steel rain, send request over. Target location, grid 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 3, BMP 2s in the open. Friendly location, grid 1, 2, 3, 2, 5, 4, 6, 6, over. Steel rain read and reads back the information. Over. Information correct. Over. 10 rounds of deep pickem in effect. Time of flight 25 seconds. Steel rain out. Easiest pie. TTFG. Target location. Grid elevation. Target description. Marking. Friend location. Marking. Get confirmation. Right? Questions for a request for fire support. What was the acronym that you used just now? TTFG. TTFG. Yep. It's uh, also on the action cards. Do you have cool. any indication on this version? Do you like calling it or anything like that? No, he's gonna make all those. Well, if they're very far apart, then you're gonna be calling in different locations for your target. Like, right. for example, you see three different fucking uh, T-80 somewhere, well, and they're very, very far apart, like 300 meters, then you need to call in each location for the T-80s. 